The evolution of leadership. As long as there have been leaders, there have been those who tried to determine how and why they were successful. Leadership itself has not evolved, but our understanding of it has. It's important to understand why very different leadership styles can be effective, why the same leadership techniques will not work in every situation, and which leadership style fits your personality best. Everyone has leadership potential within them, but understanding these concepts will help you maximize your leadership ability. Defining leadership. Simply speaking, leadership is defined as the ability to lead. Unfortunately, this is not very helpful. A better definition comes from the BNET online business directory: the capacity to establish direction and to influence and align others towards a common goal, motivating and committing them to action, and making them responsible for their performance. Although this is more descriptive, it is not substantial. It does not tell us what leadership actually is, rather what it does. To know what true leadership is, we need to examine the characteristics of a leader. Characteristics of a leader. The mark of a true leader is not a position or title held, but how many people are willing to follow him or her. Santa Clara University and the Tom Peters Group outline the following leadership characteristics: honest, competent, forward-looking, inspiring, intelligent, fair-minded, broad-minded, courageous, straightforward, imaginative. Leadership principles. The United States Army offers eleven leadership principles. Be tactically and technically proficient. Know yourself and seek self-improvement. Know your soldiers and look out for their welfare. Keep your soldiers informed. Set the example. Ensure the task is understood, supervised, and accomplished. Train your soldiers as a team. Make sound and timely decisions. Develop a sense of responsibility in your subordinates. Employ your unit in accordance with its capabilities. Seek responsibility and take responsibility for your actions. You'll notice that none of the above actually tells you how to lead in a practical manner. They don't address what to do or say in any given situation. That is because there is no real formula to being a leader. Leadership must come from within and is based on your personality. Leadership must be developed, and skills must be developed. In this training, you will learn how to develop your innate leadership abilities and build the confidence required to be a true leader. A brief history of leadership. Historical leaders. Throughout the centuries, as long as human beings have been alive, there have been leaders. We are social animals who bond together, but we look for order against the chaos of life. We look to be organized to accomplish tasks as a society that we cannot perform individually. As a result, someone inevitably ends up in charge. Leaders in the past have generally belonged to one of three categories: political, military, or religious. Political. Around 1790 BC, Babylon ruler Hammurabi created the codified laws, which unified his empire in what was seen as a fair order, as all people were subject to the same rules. Military. Sun Tzu was a military general in China from around 500 BC. He wrote *The Art of War*, and although he was a great military leader, his book is actually about how to not use armies except as a last resort, focusing more on wise political policies and strategies to prevent war. Religious. Religious leaders have been recorded throughout history. It may be said that religious leaders have had the greatest impact on their societies, with results that last for centuries, often much longer than the political or military structures in place at the time. The Buddha was a member of the royal family who rejected his wealth and began a journey of self-discovery that is emulated to this day. Moses led his people out of Egypt into the Promised Land. 
Jesus was publicly put to death, but his disciples led a religious movement that swept quickly throughout the world. Muhammad wrote the Quran, which is followed throughout the Middle East and beyond, and his philosophies gave rise to the code of Sharia law. Modern leaders. With the rise of the industrial revolution, a new kind of leader emerged: economic. The so-called captains of industry found they could build an empire based on modern technology instead of swords. Oil barons, railroad magnates, and factory owners built large fortunes without the benefit of armies, but often at the expense of the people they employed. This gave rise to union leaders and various movements designed to promote justice where abuses were perceived to exist. The Industrial Revolution also increased the number of scientific leaders, as scientists now had easy access to a wide range of new materials for their work. Psychiatry and psychology came to prominence, with studies on the workplace, its effects on workers, and how to improve productivity. Studies have shown consistently that workers are more productive when they're in a positive work environment. The attitude and influence of the boss is a major factor in this productivity. If employees feel they're listened to, respected, and treated fairly, they're happier in their work and perform better than those who feel they are disrespected and unappreciated. Which kind of work environment would you prefer? The Great Man Theory. The great man theory was abandoned in favour of the theories of behavioural science. It's easy to be inspired by stories of great men and women who did great things in their lives. Alexander the Great conquered the known world. Genghis Khan then ravaged most of it. Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves. Harriet Tubman saved hundreds from slavery in the Underground Railroad. Mother Teresa aided and comforted thousands in Calcutta who were abandoned by society. It must be noted that the great man theory includes women, because at the time this theory was developed, the term man referred to all mankind, including women, without the dichotomy of language that has occurred in recent generations. While it is clear that there are great men and women throughout history, there is much more to leadership than personality and determination. The trait theory. It has often been said great leaders are born, not made. Trait theory takes this saying literally. If you had the ability to lead, you were born with it, and there was nothing anyone could do to learn it. As psychology grew in prominence, however, more and more studies were performed on leadership and social dynamics. Today, we recognise that true leadership seems to come from a combination of both theories and more. As we have seen, there are a wide variety of leadership qualities. Everyone has some ability in at least one or more of these areas. This means that under the right circumstances, anyone can rise to a leadership role and be successful, based on the leadership style that matches their personality best. If they know how to use that ability to properly address the situation at hand, other leadership skills can be indeed learned, developed, and mastered. Transformational leadership. In 1978, James McGregor Burns introduced the idea of transformational leadership as he researched political leaders. Burns theorized that transformational leadership is actually a process where leaders interact with their followers and inspire each other to advance together. Burns' characteristics and behaviors that demonstrated the differences between management and leadership. People and organizations are transformed basically due to the leadership style and abilities of the leader, who is able to convey a vision and guide the transformation. Bernard M. Bass, in 1985, added to Burns' transformational leadership theory by shifting the focus to the followers. It is not the individual traits and vision of the leader that matter as much as it is his or her ability to influence the feelings, attitudes, and commitment of the followers. As we mentioned before in productivity studies, if followers feel they can trust a leader, or better yet, if they admire a leader who can stimulate a sense of loyalty and respect, the followers go beyond what was originally expected of them and will do so happily. As a result, productivity and unity increases. 
the followers are transformed by a charismatic, motivational leader. Summary Through all the studies of leadership, we have seen that there are a variety of attributes and abilities associated with leadership, and these vary from leader to leader. Sometimes leaders are great orators, others great writers. Some leaders are very quiet, but the force of their logic or passion wins the day. The difference between a good leader and a great leader is partly the number of leadership skills they have developed. The other part, however, is their ability to properly apply those skills to those who would follow. We will address these issues in the next section.